The right to freedom of speech has been a persistent area of contention here in the United States. We debate about what we can and cannot say. We debate, for example, was it okay for participants in the 2017 Charlottesville event to disseminate anti-Semitic and racist messages? Is it okay for people to post transphobic and homophobic messages all over social media? Is it acceptable for discriminatory messages to come out of our leaders in government? Personally, when I hear these questions, I am always left wondering, are these the questions we should be debating? Now, keep in mind that I am not a constitutional law expert, and it is not my intention today to have a legal argument about the right to freedom of speech. I am a social worker, and as a social worker, I not only consider how laws and policies affect those with whom I work, but I also consider how our individuals or communities are affected by their social environment. See, I frequently witness how hateful speech affects the people with whom I work and those I love. I have also been in the receiving side of hate speech. So I wonder, should we change the ways in which we talk about freedom of speech? My goal today is to move beyond a conversation about the semantics of freedom of speech and to talk about this compassionate debate that we should be having about how what we say affect our neighbors. Now, in order to understand this effect, we need to first understand how freedom of speech works. So I looked it up, and the US Constitution First Amendment calls in part for not creating laws that could limit our right to freedom of speech. Then that means that freedom of speech covers anything I say that can be harmful or offensive. And then I was wondering and thinking, wait, isn't this what we consider hate speech? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. So what is hate speech? There are two definitions about hate that caught my attention. The first one is that hate is an intense hostility and aversion, usually deriving from a sense of fear, anger, and injury. Then the second definition about hate is that hate is a systematic and especially politically exploited expression of hatred. I found out that there are no laws in the US that address hate speech. There are zero laws about it. In fact, According in the Supreme Court in Booz v. Berry, we, and I quote, must tolerate insulting and even outrageous speech in order to provide adequate space to the freedoms protected by the First Amendment, end quote. Although in other parts of the world this is not the case, in 2018, a woman in South Africa was sentenced to three years in prison for using racist slurs against police officers. Listening and internalizing to hate speech leads people to feel and experience depression, anxiety, and poor health outcomes. For example, when our government describes transgender soldiers as a burden, and there is news about erasing a definition of gender that is outside of the binary of male and female, there is an increase in calls from LGBTQI plus youth to crisis and hotlines across the country. Words can hurt. What I say can intentionally or unintentionally affect the, a person on the other side of my argument. So what if someone feels hurt? Someone might ask. Stop whining so much, others may add. Well, for many of us, listening to hate speech is not an isolated event. It is something that we hear constantly. It is what many call a death by a thousand cuts. And those who tend to be cut by hate speech are usually already members of oppressed and marginalized communities. We hear of people of color that they're lazy. 
of migrants, that they're criminals, of LGBTQI individuals, that they are sick, of victims of sexual assault, that they are liars, and to those who experience mental health, that they are weak. And these hateful messages do not land without harm. In fact, these words, for many people, can become the difference between life and death. They translate into racial profiling by law enforcement and the death of African Americans, into LGBTQI plus youth completing suicide, into Muslim communities being bombed and killed at their places of worship, at migrant children dying in detention centers. In these cases, like in many others, hate speech is a form of violence. Not by physical force, not by chains, not by imprisonment, but by the use of words protected by the right to freedom of speech. By using freedom of speech to define minorities, to categorize them, to reduce them to inaccurate adjectives, to shape their narratives, Feeling hurt then turns into being constantly oppressed, repeatedly violated. What is even more worrisome is the experiences of those who live at the intersections of all of those identities that could be identified or defined as marginalized or oppressed. For example, what is the experience of a transgender woman who is also a migrant, who is also Latinx, and who's also experiencing trauma because they have experienced violence in their countries of origin. And I'd like for you to join me for a second, and I'll invite you to close your eyes and to think about this for one moment. Try to imagine that you are that young transgender Latina who experienced violence in her own town and is now in the U.S. trying to escape from it. Now, as that young transgender Latina, imagine all of the hateful comments that you've heard to describe each and every one of those identities here in the United States. Now imagine that you hear these words and these messages during the day, all the time, every day. You just cannot evade it. You hear these things walking down the street, at the supermarket, just sitting at a coffee shop. How would you feel? Would you want it to stop? You can open your eyes again, thank you. I have never thought about it this way, some of you may be thinking. And if that is your thought, you may have never experienced before this sort of violence. And if that is the case, I just invite you and encourage you to listen. To listen to those on the other side of hateful speech. Not because of a rational debate, but because it is a compassionate thing to do for other fellow human beings. It is, after all, our responsibility to our communities. While hateful speech attacks our marginalized communities, many are fighting back. Many are using their right to freedom of speech to resist, to cultivate, to protect. Who are they? They are leaders in your communities. We all live next to you. There are community leaders like Gigi Pedraza, who uses her voice to amplify the voice of Latinx in Georgia. The community leaders like Rebecca Staplewax, who is a queer, Jewish, Activist Mama Bear and uses her voice to educate, to further understanding and foster relationships. There are community leaders like Reverend Duncan Teague, who uses his voice to fight for the dignity of the whole human family, and especially black queer lives. And there are also community leaders like Estrella Sanchez, who uses her voice to advocate for Latinx 
TLB, GQIA plus communities. These childless leaders, like many others, are using the right to freedom of speech to fight back against the hateful speech that oppresses them and their communities. Have you ever wondered what would happen if we start to have a conversation where we just start to listen? If we listen to leaders like these amazing leaders and their communities, what would happen if we move from a philosophical argument about the Constitution and into a compassionate conversation that is actually a dialogue? And for a second here, I want to pause and address those who may be hesitant about my own speech today. Are you antagonizing freedom of speech? Might be a question. And my answer is no. I'm also not asking for us to diminish our right to freedom of speech or to get rid of it. After all, just like the examples that we just looked at, there are many leaders in our communities who are utilizing their right to freedom of speech to counter their experiences in the United States. Now, others might be thinking, another speech about political correctness. And if that is your thought, I invite you to remember that we have already defined hate as a political expression. So hate speech is about politics. So I hope that the next time that you exercise your right to freedom of speech, you pause and wonder, am I willing to hurt others with my words? How can this message affect others? How can I use my own right to freedom of speech to make this a better world for everyone? After all, Harvey Milk, a fierce gay community organizer who was killed for using his own right to freedom of speech to denounce discrimination and demand equality, said, rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. Thank you.